Well, the first time I heard music, I was a baby because my dad uh, is a guitarist, and I was used to listening to him. And um, they were very musical, both. I mean, they're still alive, and uh, they like music. They love music. So I grew up in a very musical environment, and. Um, I started playing drums when I was like a kid, 10 years old, and, and then I moved to the guitar at 11 because I didn't have a drum kit. Well, the first time like, I heard music was uh, through my mom, I guess, when she was pregnant. And then eventually uh, she got a great collection and loved music. All my family, from my mom's part, they music lovers, so from all sorts of styles of music, so I always me and my sister, we always loved music, but I was very obsessive and I loved some of those records and were jazz, classic jazz, uh, classic rock, um, tango, flamenco, classical music, and all of that. It was just when I was a teenager that I discovered metal music, Metallica and all of that. And then I, I, I include that style of music in, in my taste of music. Uh, we implement uh, heavy metal music into our music because it's um, the music that kind of taught us how to play the guitar. So, um, yeah, since we came up with the, new, the first album, um, we kind of were embraced as well for the metal community thanks to Metallica because they, li they listened to the cover we did for um, their song called Orion. And then when we started touring the States, we got to meet them. They went to see us live and we got to meet them. And, and, and then we kind of rolled up, you know, within the world of uh, metal bands because they understood we came from that world too, we loved it. And I understand some people don't relate our music to it, but uh, it is, I mean, once they go to a show, then they understand, you know, maybe listen to the albums, they don't understand, it's more difficult for them. But for musicians and guitar players, they understand that a lot of the times we play uh, riffs, metal riffs, but in acoustic. And that makes a difference, you know. But uh, yeah, we still implement that in the music and in the recordings and live. Well, we uh, met a long time ago in Mexico City in a cultural house kind of thing, you know, where you go and 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 you join a drama class or a piano class or something like this. And that's where we, me and Rodrigo, we met. It was a, we were a group of teenagers. So we all into kind of metal and alternative music and all of these things. And then eventually I joined Rodrigo's band. He got a band already with his brother and a friend. And then a few years later, maybe two years later, I joined that band. It was pure thrash metal band. Like uh, we did our own music and Rodrigo used to scream and play the guitar and I used to play the other guitar like like big Marshall amplifiers and wah wah but everything and then we attempted to sound like Megadeth, Metallica, Pantera, uh, Testament and all of those Anthrax. There were we were big fans of those bands so we wanted to play like that but eventually we kind of uh, stopped the band, it's a very long story, so long story short. And then we end up playing in Europe. We went to Ireland without knowing anybody there. We attempt to just travel all over Europe and play whatever, whatever we could. But our promise was not to, was not to work in anything else except playing the guitar. So this is, this is our purpose in life. Even if we have to play in the bar, at the corner, and nobody is, is paying attention to us, for us, that had a lot of meaning because for us, it, it was a, a symbol of we can do what we love, which is play and and practice and all of that. And we still get getting a reward for it, so we can still travel and all of this. So we give up the the uh, sort of expectations with the band. And we said we just like music and travel. So, and then eventually a lot of opportunities start to come up with us. Also a lot of new ideas and a lot of creativity kind of like explodes and we start to, to do these new rhythms and do all of this what we do now. At that time it was just bits and pieces of that. Uh, but it was a long process. And then eventually we got a record, a record deal and all of that, and we're just touring. And well, this is the first time we play here. We're very happy. 
Well, the turning point of uh, our career was probably, I, I don't know, maybe we have different view on it, but I guess it was not uh, when we were able to play main stages and main festivals around the world, but I think it was way earlier. I think it was when we realized that although we were basking in the streets in, in, in Dublin, once we met a guy and said like, you know, you should do us a show. Many people would go and pay for it. And we gave it a go and we played in a very famous venue called Whelan's in Dublin. Small venue, like 400 people, but very famous. Everyone had played there. And it was a Monday night and it was sold out. And we were busking the street. I mean, they could have not paid, you know, because we were playing free, for free in the streets. But once we did that show, I said like, fuck, I mean, we can do shows, so let's stop playing in the streets. And probably that was the main turning point of the career. I think uh, Mexican scene it for us is a little unknown because we we left Mexico in the 1990. We went to Europe and all our career and everything has been pretty much based outside Mexico. We know because I live in Mexico now that it's a it's a whole new world. It has changed a lot. There's a really good, very good bands of pretty good acts in this a lot of them and festivals and all of that, which is fantastic. Personally, I think uh, the label of Mexican band or a Swedish band or all of this is just another another label like in, to me rock music is we can be from China but it's rock music is is a, a band from Brazil but, but they play folk music you know and that that sort of thing is just I, I think in music we kind of have to transcend a little bit all of those country kind of border things that we have here uh, for us in our own experience playing outside mexico when we started people thought like in ireland they thought we were brazilians or that with that they thought we were spanish and with and they thought we played mexican you then with they thought we played mexican music and all of these type of of cliche so sometimes when we were used to play X venue and Rodrigo started to tease people with some Metallica melodies, for them was like, oh, what's that? You know, it's just like, it's not so much so serious. We never played Mexican music because, traditional Mexican music, because we don't know how to play traditional Mexican music. Yeah, probably one of the weirdest shows we've done is uh, when we play for uh, President Barack Obama at the White House because we didn't really know we were in the middle of uh, mayhem. We were um, promoting the 11.11 album in 2009 um, and then it was like uh, we were really uh, like super busy doing shows everywhere in the world and all that and when we were uh, in the States we, were, we had this invitation and we didn't really know, it was not clear, they didn't want to to give information to the label, which was American label, or to the management. They just uh, wanted to know if we were uh, available to play at the White House. And we said like, yeah, but you know, the American people, I mean, we were so um, in the middle of everything that uh, we didn't realize how important or uh, unique situation was that. Uh, but we saw everyone around us, especially in the States, like super excited about it. And it was very interesting because we had, a, we, we were kind of playing not only for the president, but 200 governors and the Mexican president as well. But nobody knew. It was like a very private thing, you know. And they built this beautiful, beautiful stage outside the White House. Um, and, um, and we got to meet the president inside the White House. He, he had our music on the iPod. He's a fan and it was great to, to play for him. They had dinner first and then they came down to the stage. And they sat and they watched the show. So we played half an hour. And then Beyonce played it half an hour. So it was like, a, I don't know, the Mexican side and, the, and Beyonce representing the American side. It was great. It was a very interesting experience and very out of the ordinary. Well, I think uh, basically political, all the, the sort of politics to, I think for both of us, is a theme that it needs to be addressed from a, from a specific route. And Personally, a lot of the, the things that, unfortunately, not only Mexicans, but a lot of people from all over the world, they immigrating from country to country, people that comes from Africa to Europe and all of that things, it, it, it relies on a, 
in another problem that is big major. And I think in the in the way I see it, um, and I the way we related to also the veganism because a lot of people don't relate those things, but veganism is quite political. Uh, it really relies on on the fact that people need to be people the citizens we need to be aware we are the ones who are gonna the ones who are gonna say the politicians what to do and we need to do that with our acts and 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 with our values and and just really play like important social sort of um, uh, change well, and, and and transcend all of the things that we've been born into this culture that is it has this mentality of supremacy so if we as Gandhi said the the government the people have the government they they ask for you know so I think if, a lot of the things who relied on us Mexico is a quite troubled country it has some incredible things and a lot of exciting things are happening. But also I think we Mexicans, we need to work on mentality too and just to, to kind of see there is a, always a light at the end of the tunnel. And we, we Mexicans tend to be very pessimistic about things and I think it's important to keep it positive so then we have our people not to migrate so much. Because uh, I, honestly, I do think we have a great country and we can work on things so people they don't go, you know? There's a lot of people, they ha unfortunately, they have to go. and. In, in the States, there's a lot of Latin, Latin American communities, they take care of all of things and that is great. But I think also Mexican citizens and Mexican people, like no politician, Mexican people, we need to be aware of that and we need to, we really need to kind of put a solution into, into these things, just like actions, you know. But it's a long, it's, I can stay here and talk and talk, so we better... <laughs> Well, the, the composing uh, process or the writing process has always been the same. I mean, at least for the last 10 years, because we know each other for many years, but um, it's quite simple, really. I mean, it's, I start the process on my own, and until I know that this uh, uh, melody or song will hit this, um, will like uh, uh, or will be for the band, then uh, I show it to Gab. Then she she likes it normally because now I know what you know we, we both like, and then we together we kind of structure the song, and we can spend sometimes now it's getting easier, but uh, in the past we would spend like months sometimes two three months with the same thing trying to change you know the ways until we are happy but uh, now it's kind of getting easier and we know each other better and we work faster. We plan to play tonight. Uh, a new material. We have a new two a brand new pieces. So I hope people liked it, and they mean a lot to us. It's because it's a new for us. It's like a new cycle. Uh, we we are coming to a different new places in this tour, new cities, and also we have this new music that we just come up with. So we're very excited about that. And also we're gonna play from the first album and the Nine Dead Alive and 11-11 album. And I hope people enjoy it. We're really looking forward for the gig.